Hello everybody and welcome back to season 39 of the Pokemon Cup series. Today we're here at Homestead Miami Speedway for the running of the Pokemon Home 400. On the pole for tonight's race will be the 96 of Clark McKee. Alongside him with the 42 of Max Bailey. Row 2 is the 21 of Samad Khan and the 10 of Ryan Durani. Row 3 is the 12 Priya McShane and the 19 McNicky Maxwell. Row 4 has Quinn Porter in the 52 and the 27 Ember Ross. And running out your top 10 are Jonathan Fast and Anthony Then. Our winner last weekend in Atlanta was Alexander Rowe who, had, who scored his second win of the season in just six races here in season 39 last weekend. Uh, he'll be starting in 36, but that win, with that win last weekend, he joins Eli Bright as the only drivers with more than one race win so far in season 39. And this will only be the seventh race of the season. So these two might be huge, might be huge drivers to look out for come playoff time. These two might be going tooth and nail with one another when the playoffs begin. So can't wait to see how that will turn out. But for now, let's go trackside for the command to fire the engines. It'll be 28 laps under the lights here at Homestead, Miami. We're about to get the green flag in just a moment. And Clark McKee will lead the field down to the green flag. Will we see another repeat winner tonight or will we see another name being added to the playoff field? No points are on the line for the regular season, but just wins and, and, and some crucial finishing positions, top like podium finishes and top fives they need to get themselves in the playoffs. So here we go. We're about to get the green flag and the Pokemon Home 400 is underway here at Homestead, Miami. Clark McKee would love to add his name to the playoff field. Starting on the pole today. Oh, these guys are going to be in the wall. They better be careful. Ryan Durani running up that wall. Got to be real careful with that tough wall. That high line is the probably the best line at this track. Uh, unlike Atlanta, though, you'll have to avoid hitting the wall. Durani not doing a pretty good job avoiding it. Might lose momentum, and we have a crash behind, and it looks like Dylan Crew might have just got turned. Oh, 96 in the wall. He's gone too close to the wall. Still trying to get the momentum, but Max Bailey is going to take the lead under caution. Told you that wall was going to be dangerous. They were trying to avoid it. The high line's the best line, but these guys tend to go too high up into the wall, and they lose that momentum and lose the positions. And that's what happened in the 96, racing back to the caution. Here's the caution, by the way. Dylan Kroom got turned by Avi Sachs trying to battle for a position. That was way back in the pack, though. <laughs> so I'm not sure what they were. They were like racing aggressively like they were trying to compete for the win. But Dylan Kroom got the un got unlucky and got right into the 20 and got hit by the 22 behind. There's another wreck. Three car spin racing back to the caution and they were separate from one another. Oh wow. Three cars got together right after uh right before they took the caution flag. Castillo, Igor Barreto, and Austin Stitzel, they got together. Uh jumbled up, racing back to the yellow, and uh we had another wreck just before the uh they took the uh yellow flag. So now let's see how this is gonna work. Oh, Bailey's going to pit very early in the race, only the third lap of the race, and Quinn Porter's going to take the lead. I got a feeling this is going to be a topsy-turvy race. It's going to be one of those races. So the new leader is going to be Quinn Porter, the rookie in the 52, going to lead to the green flag back again.
Ryan Durant, oh no wait, Ryan Durant, he's running second behind him. The two rookies in the top two, all both looking to get their first wins and trying to get themselves in the playoffs. Wins now matter since there are no more points. 52 has had a good start. Oh, Durant is up in the wall again. And Castillo, no wait, I'm sorry, Acevedo takes second spot. Grayson Acevedo just took second. He might have forced the 10 up in the wall. Cassandra Kirker goes to third place. We have another yellow. Big crash in turn two. Christian Vargas went around and a handful of cars have taken have also been taken out. It didn't even start in the 66. It started right in the front. Oh, 96. Oh man, the leader that was early on <laughs> gets into some trouble later as he gets hit by another car and then the wreck began. <laughs> then they started to crash. Oh man. What a wow. That quick, huh? Well, Quinn Porter, let's see if he has an issue with the wall, he's gonna take the lead under caution. And he did indeed he will. 52 leads. So the 52's out in front, Quinn Porter, and I think he might have pitted under caution. Either that or, oh, Priam McShane's out in front. I think they pitted under the, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but somehow Priam McShane took the lead, and we're going back to the green. Not sure how she took the lead, but, oh, she's in the wall. And the 52's going to take it. 52's in front. So, 52's back in the lead. A car of Cassandra Kirker got second spot. Quinn Porter getting a little too tight. Acevedo goes to third spot. Oh, 34's in the wall. And this is the first time they went more than one, two laps with uh, under green uh, this entire race. So way to go for them trying to keep this clean and the 52 retains the lead and Kirker right behind him and Acevedo as well. There's Pichu making his way up to the top five and Ryan Duran, Eli Bright trying to go three wide and now Pichu's in trouble a little bit. And here comes Kirker just, just took the lead. The 52 just took the lead. He, she got it. 52 in front. The 8... No, wait, I'm sorry. 8 cars in front. I'm sorry. 8 cars in front. Kirker just took the lead from Quinn Porter. Now here comes Acevedo. Trying to avoid the wall. Boy, man. This is going to be tight. Nearly 3 wide there in the middle. Just a dozen laps left, and Acevedo has taken the lead, trying to block the A-car. Wow, what a block there by the 48. And the 52 trying to force the 8 up high into the wall. Might help out the, uh, the 48 a little bit. And there's a caution. And there's a crash between Giovanni Castiglia. One other car just got hit. Yeah, with just 11 to go, Castillo got hit by Abby Sachs. And 43, a little bit of a nudge there. And the 19, Nikki Maxwell just got caught up in the worst part of it. And she got turned herself. That's why the caution's out. Acevedo going to lead to the yellow. And this is going to set up an interesting restart. It's going to come down to the wire. It's going to come down to a handful of laps remaining at Homestead. And we're green again. Only six laps to go, and Isaiah Brunash has made his way up to the front, up to second spot. Oh, 48's in the wall. Might be a chance for the 77 to get to the front. And there's a caution with five to go. Huge crash behind. I'm not sure if they're going to be back to the green in regulation, or will they be an overtime attempt, but... What we do know is how the caution came out. Figuerello and Abby Sachs 
not having a great day with one another, they unfortunately collide with they collide and cause a huge crash. And Isaiah Bur and the 48 just barely got that lead. He barely hanged on to it. The question is though, will they get back to the green in regulation or will we have to have an overtime attempt? And what is going on here? Did they pit under the caution or something? Hold on. Did the pace car get lost? Or are they waiting for the pace car to pass? Or was there another crash behind and we didn't even see? And now the pace car is lost. I'm not sure what's happening right now, but let's see. Hmm, that's pretty weird. Never seen that happen before. Okay, so it looks like the pace car might try to catch up to the field. I'm not sure what's happening now. I think the pace car was, uh, I don't know what, what the pace car was uh, doing there, but... Hmm, okay. It looks like, oh... Everyone's trying to get back in line for whatever reason. I think they might be planning to restart this race with just one more lap. Or, I don't know. But I've never seen something like a little bit of confusion there. But I don't know if that, that it was intentional. If they were trying to get... Oh no, they're trying to get everybody prepared. Look, they're going to have one more lap. Unless if um, something happens during the um, restart process... They're going to have one more lap, so we will finish this in regulation. There will be a one lap dash to the finish. Just one more lap to run here at Homestead, Miami. It's going to come down to this. It's going to come down to whoever has the best restart. This is it, folks. This is the race. This is going to be one final lap to run. And these guys are going to be ready for the final lap. Everybody is going to... Get on there on the, get on the gas as soon as that green waves and we'll see what happens. We'll see if Acevedo can hold on for the win. We'll see if Isaiah Burnesh can finally get back into the win, winning streak and we'll see if any of these other drivers have any chance for the front. It's going to come down to one final lap at Homestead Miami folks and we're about to see what's about to go down. Final lap at Homestead, Miami. It's all or nothing here. Pace car to pit road, and we're going to have one more lap. And here we go. Green flag's going to come out. Going back to the green with the white flag also displaying with one more lap. Does Burnesh have anything? He's going to go on the low line trying to knock the 48 out. 48 puts a block. Two turns left. We'll see how long the block will hold. Down the corner here comes the 77. It's going to be towed to the wire. 48 and 77 to the finish. And it's going to be the 48. Acevedo wins it here at Olmstead. Grayson Acevedo takes the win at Homestead, Miami. He did it. Isaiah Burnett, he was right behind, but he pulled off a block. He pulled off a huge block on in the halfway through the final lap. Was able to hold him off for the hard charge and able to get the win in a very close fashion. Wow. What a race, what a finish, and Grayson Acevedo has won it here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Acevedo, at long last, he returns to his old team and gets the job done and wins it in a wild finish at Homestead Miami. Wow, was that something. So Hendrick Motorsports has done it, have done it again, their fourth win this season in seven races. Two of them have come from Eli Bright. And one of them has come from Katie Lynn Bexford. That was back in Sonoma in race number two. And now Acevedo joins them in the playoff hunt. And that leaves the nine car Austin Stitzel 
the only one of the Hendrick cars to have not won this season so far. Still very early in the season, and anything can happen. So the nine car isn't giving up on getting on that pursuit of the win. That's for sure. But anyway, um, here are the results on the screen. I'll update the winners list. And Acevedo, after three seasons of not winning a race in the Cup Series, he gets the job done. He finally collects his first win since season 36 back in Biker Necky. Now he has 17 career wins in the series. That ties him with James Richardson and DJ Curtis. One more win will tie him with Seth Cole in the winner's list in the Pokemon Cup series. So Acevedo joins an elite company with his 17th career cup win. And he returns to the team that he mostly, that, that care, supports him the most, the 48 team. And they get the job done here at Homestead, Miami. So until then, until next time, we will see you guys later. Our next race will be held at Richmond. So you do not want to miss the next race at Richmond Raceway. Until then, though, we will see you guys later.